One. Hey guys! Woo! I made it. Barely. I know. <laughs> like, I didn't think I was that close, but it sure no, was. I didn't even know it was that close. <laughs> you got two minutes. Oh shoot. Ah, oh, well, welcome. I see we already have uh, at least Dean and Ron hanging out, and William and Victor and Chantal. Well, there's a lot of you guys hanging out. What's up? It's Friday. It is Friday. This is super awesome. And we're finishing a whip. Yes. Yes, we are. Okay. Well, you can take it from here. All right. I don't know if the top camera is set up or not. I, I don't just, know. You just got in. I just got in here and threw that down. Here. It looks pretty centered. It looks pretty good. We'll see what we got. We'll see what we got. All right. So I completed the second belly. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty good. Oh, this is super off color. Yeah. That's going to drive me crazy. Yes. That's the camera that's turned off the table. That's now the table is a little crooked. No, not really. Well, now it's straight in the video. No. Oh, nice, Tony. <laughs> oh, boy. There you are. Thanks. Perfect. Look at that. All right. So I got the second belly done and the bolster. So that's all done up. Just like the first one. Yep. So you did the same thing where you wrapped it in a thin piece of leather. Yep. All the way down. Bound it with thread. Yeah. Not too tight down here. So Back for those of you that weren't here Wednesday or didn't watch the video from Wednesday, we are continuing the whip. He had the inner core. I had, first belly. I had the first belly done. That's right. And then and the we braided most of the second one or half of the second yep. one. And then he wrapped it. Well, he wrapped, I guess he, he wrapped the belly first. The first belly. I did the first did that. the first yep. bolster, the second belly, and then this is the second bolster. Right. So we are taking it, we are doing the overlay. overlay. Yep. So today. I, I did all my math and stuff. I got my fancy little Christmas tree chart here. <laughs> so, oh hey, that one's different than the one you had the other day. No, it's the same. It's just a lot more strands. Okay. So it's the same basic layout. Oh um, okay. I I understand. Yeah. So, yeah, for the overlay, I'm using 107 feet, roughly, of lace. Uh, I'm going to end in a six strand or six plat. So to get there, I need six, 20, six 12 foot strands, three 24 footers. And then I have all my, my smallest amount, and then I split it up, uh, my other two where I need to drop them. And then I'm dropping this one at two and a half feet down, this one at three and a half, and this one at four and a half. And then by the time I get there, all my strands need to be this size. So four and a half mil, four mil, and then three mil. Whenever I get to those points, that's how wide my strands need to be when I get there. So. Did you want to talk about how you got there? Like how I figured out that math? Yeah. So basically what I did is I took, I took the measurement of the widest part of my uh, core. Okay. Or what I'm braiding around. Uh, times, times that by 4.5 and divide it by how many strands I'm going to be using, which when I'm starting is going to be 12. And that gave me five and a half. So all my strands, all my lace is cut to five and a half. Uh, and then whenever I, whenever I figured out where I want to drop them, I took that measurement and did the same math to figure out how wide my strands need to be when I get to that point. And then I've also marked where I'm dropping them with string. So I don't pass it. Maybe after we're done with this, I'm going to make him write out a little bit of that. And then we can add like a little PDF of the math that he used to get here. Like somewhere where you guys can look at it later mm -hmm. and go down it. So we'll, we'll try to do that. We don't have it right now, but we'll try to add that to the, to the um, YouTube description once it's done. So if you guys are out there attempting to math your own whips. Yeah you'll have a little bit of a guidance. Yeah, other than just words. Yeah. Uh, so I didn't have enough lace out of that one Ruhide. That Ruhide was like six and a half feet. Mm -hmm. So I had to I had to get some more lace. So this, You found a brown one. I found some brown that is wide enough for me to use. So I had to get that. So for a six foot whip, a seven square foot hide will do you perfect. Um, I have about, I didn't bring it with me, but I have about that much left. In so, the center? In the center, yeah. So you can make a cute little wallet to go. You, you can, yes. Or like some like lash tabs, like some fancy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, all right. I got to undo all these now. So, if you wouldn't mind helping me, Liz. I can do that. And I have all these knotted in the center. 
Oh, we already points, did that. Center okay. points marked with knots. Does it have to be precisely in the center, or can it just be estimated? It can be estimated. Well, I'm, I'm pretty close to close the center. You want as close as you want. But I always give myself extra lace, because I'd rather be too long than too short and have to start over. Oh, and instead of tying how you did the other day, you tie these in a knot. I just tied them in a knot, yeah. Because you cut it off anyways. Yes. Yes. It doesn't matter how you tie it. So, all these get cut off. And then today we'll show you one thing that we didn't show you the other day because we didn't make it that far is how to um, size or size down on the plat. Yep, size down your strands as you're going as you go. Yep, and with I'm, his very sketchy tool. You can freehand it if you want, but I have a sketchy tool. <laughs> I have freehanded it before, and I know David Morgan, the guy who made the Indian and Jones whips, he freehands it. Except he gets little bobby pins and cuts notches in them to different widths, so we have a whole bunch of different sizes, and he sizes down that way. So he gets, he holds it, and he holds a razor blade against his thumb, and he swipes down. In a bobby pin? Not a bobby pin, a clothes pin. Clothes pin. So it's All a little right. piece of wood. Okay, okay, that makes way more sense. Yeah. I was like, yeah. uh, I don't understand. Yeah. All right. Okay. So I'm gonna clamp this in the vise. that. Move it up. I have a piece of leather so it doesn't crush it. Michael, I don't think that there's really a way to do a pattern. I mean, this is this will get you the information. Like we said, we'll, we'll get you the math, but uh, yeah, there's a... It varies on... And there's some books. Like, you can buy what the, the whip making book. Mm -hmm. And then I... Was there another book that you really liked that we talked about last time we did this? Um, I know David Morgan has a book on whip making. And okay. I recommend that one. Yeah. Uh, that's a really good book. He's been making whips for like 70 years, so. That's impressive. Yes. That's more than both of our lives combined. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. Hey, Tony, can you click the new comment thingy on the Facebook thingy over here? Yeah. So I'm going to start it just how I do normally. I've got half my strands, knots on the back. One side over, other side over, makes a little X. It doesn't matter the placement of your strands. Just like that. And then I'm going to push these three up to make myself my loop. I'm going to take one side of all of my other three strands and just lightly feed them in. Do I have another strand somewhere? Should. It's on the floor. It dropped. There it is. It's like I'm, I'm a short. <laughs> You're like I know that I cut been enough. That would have been embarrassing. <laughs> huh, Johnny Orgrin, Orgrin of witchcraft. Whips. Oh, Witchcraft Whips. Okay. Has also recently published a really excellent whip making book. Yes, yes. I've watched many of his YouTube videos. He's very good. There you go. He also has a YouTube channel, very detailed videos. So, so yeah, so if you're really interested in making some whips, check out. I'm pretty sure that's where Spencer learned most of his whip making was yep. probably the internet. <laughs> yep. Just like Chris learned knife making mostly from the internet. Mm-hmm. Poor Luna. Tony filled the the bottom of the table here. Full she can't stuff, so she can't lay now. on the little cross member here. Ogren. Ogren. Thanks, Tessa. Taya. Taya? You're probably gonna have to tell me how to pronunciate your name too. <laughs> but please don't get mad if I do it wrong. Just or if I kind of make fun of it, because that's really just, that's all I got to do here, guys. Otherwise, I just sit here and I don't do anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's true. I make him do all the work. Yeah. All right. So are you good? Luna. Luna. She's so sad. 
gosh. So whiny. Mm -hmm. All right. What are you crying about? Because I'm not petting her actively. Right, my dog is just whimpering on the floor, staring at Holly. Mm -hmm. So, alrighty. Poor conditioner. I've almost gone through this entire tub. This was like almost full. When, when you started I this? I grabbed it. And yeah, now it's like mostly empty. So, a seven to eight foot hide of kangaroo for a six foot whip and a container of black rock. Yep. That's, that's your material list. Oh, plus some veg tan and some thread, and a piece uh, of steel, and. Yeah. Uh, you need an Australian strand or some way to size oh, your strands. Oh, an Australian. But like materials. Materials, yes. Yeah, materials, so. Consumables. Not included. Correct. Good morning, Darylin. You can just say Tessa. All right. Now, I'm going to start this just so I can get started a normal herringbone. Then we're going to move over to a double basket weave type deal. Faia. Faia. What are you trying to pronounce? She she's giving me the phonetic oh. for her name. Greek meaning goddess. That's cool. Yeah. My mom named me Elizabeth because she had had, had enough children because I was her fifth. And apparently that means a god of plenty. And she had had plenty. <laughs> and so that's that's why I'm Elizabeth. <laughs> yep. She says, I'm I'm done. I'm good now. Wow. Yeah. My special child. Mm-hmm. My great accident, I guess. <laughs> I'm putting words in her mouth now, but I could I could pretend. <laughs> okay, right. so what are you doing? I'm just doing a couple just regular herring bones under three over three because it's a nine plat. What am I around that thing? Yep. Yeah. So just to get it set, this is probably all I'll do. Just to get it started. So you have 12 strands. We had eight in the previous video. Yep. So you did under two, over two. Yep. But you have 12 now. I have 12 now. In the first belly, I did four. Okay. So it would be under one, over, over one. one. All the way down. And I ended in four in the second belly. So I dropped four strands, or two strands, four strands. Slide this up. Yeah, yeah. Just like yeah. that. Get most of the knots off the top. Then we're gonna go into a diamond plait, which is going to be under two, over two, no, over two, under two, over two. What? We're going un over two, under two, over two to get a double diamond braid. So, and over we're two, under two, over two. Over two. And then since we're doing over two, we need to grab two from the same side. Okay. So I grabbed one from up here, and we grab another one from up here. They follow the same path. So you take two around with you when you go? Yes, and this is just for the handle. Okay. I did the same thing with the Paracord one. Will they always be the same too? Uh, <laughs> I believe so. Yes. Okay. This should be the same to the entire D of the way down. And then. And so, what is it called that you're doing right now? A herringbone? Uh, yeah. diamond. A diamond. Okay. Yep. So we're gonna go under two or over two, under two, over two. And the key to diamond braiding is not pulling your strands out on the side. So there's two there's strands tucked way back here, and you you unlike a herringbone, you don't want them coming straight out. You want them sitting in the back. If you do pull them out, you'll end up with a herringbone on the back and your diamond plaid on the front, mm. and it doesn't look the best. Unless you really like that look, then go for it. So gonna grab this one. 
Just make sure you grab the right one. Luna, you're shaking the table. <laughs> <laughs> Now you can see we got a double yeah. diamond plat going on here. And the handle's the most tedious part, so we'll just keep going. So you still just pull one at a time. Just one at a time. Over two, under two, over two. Because you always want to end with an over. So if I went under, over, under, I don't want to go under. I always want to go over on my last strands that I go over. To secure them. Yep, to hold them down. And just make sure your strands don't get crossed. So, like these two right here. Mm -hmm. These two right here, you want them to lay like this. And you don't want them to cross over like this. You want to make sure they lay flat. Filling now. Mm -hmm. I don't know why it just doesn't do that to begin with, but I'm just letting you hang with that today because I'm working on other things. Okay. Good. Alright. <laughs> so then you can grab two strands if you want at once, like both your strands. So grab both of them and bring them over. like the most complicated French braid ever. This isn't even complicated. <laughs> you just have really long hair. Yeah, a lot. So, just keep it tight. I think this Thea um, could braid with you over here. She says, if you leave a little extra from your bolster sticking out at the heel, you can pop that part into the vise and plait from below the vise so you don't have yeah. to fight it. Yeah, I know. I, know. <laughs> uh, I was planning on getting to there once I got a little ways down. That's what I normally do. <laughs> if I can find where those strands went. Wayne would like to know, Spencer, if you uh, have nightmares about braiding. No, no. <laughs> it's, it's actually relaxing. You've done a lot of it. I've done a lot. Of I feel like in the beginning you probably had a lot of... Stressful moments. Well, just like thought about like, okay, like what am I doing? Yeah. Like figuring out the process. Yes. I mean, I like figuring stuff out, so... Yeah. It was fun. So my, I think my first one I did, I did a separate handle than the thong like the thong was black it was about a paracord the thong was black and the handle was white or black no it was white but how i did it is i pre-wrapped the strands half of them and then went back the other way with a lacing needle oh. and did a stars there was stars in it oh my so that sounds quite complicated for your first one it was <laughs> you know, i gotta do the hardest thing first you know Test is it. Tia. Thea. Thea. I'm going to get there eventually. I don't know why I just want to say Tessa. That's just what pops in my head. It's really small on my screen over here. Like, I really have to squint to see everything. Tia said that you only have nightmares for the first five years or so. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's about it. And then, and then it's fine. Well, I've been doing it since I was like 12. So that's how many years? Eight. Eight. Ish. Kind of. Dream free years. Yeah. No. 
That'd be only three because I've been doing it for eight. Oh, you've been doing it for eight. Yes. All right, now we'll move down. That was such a good part for the video, though. What, that view? Yeah, but we can scooch the table forward if we yep. need to. Or I can scooch the vice forward. It's screwed to the table. I have the drill over there. <laughs> Let me just drill more holes in your table. Yeah. Just keep drilling holes in your table. Yeah. I'm sure you won't mind. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. The beginning of the whip seems terrible. Yeah, that's the hardest part. Or the most tedious. Yeah, you just got strands everywhere. You got like So 12 foot on each side? Yep. 12 feet on each side. People don't realize that, you know, leather work's a pretty good exercise. You gotta put your arm way in the air, you know, you gotta bring it back down. You're always bending over. Mm-hmm. Keeps you nice and limber. Tessa said that she would like to learn how to do the knots. Spencer's also pretty good at knots. Actually, next week, um, Denny's going to be making this cute little keepsake box uh, that he's tooled. Mm -hmm. And for the lid, there's a little... It's a Chinese button knot. A Chinese button knot for the lid and for its four little feet. So Spencer will be here on Wednesday of next week helping us with those knots. Because Denny, he's like, I got somebody to do those for me. I don't need to learn how to do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I do have Turk's head. Knots. Yep. It's we in did. the other video. The yep. last one. We did the Turk's head knot. There was a slight a snafu, if I remember correctly. Yeah. At I, the got, end. I think I got a little confused or something happened. I don't remember. <laughs> it's too many overs and unders and yeah. follow the strands. I remember some of it. Yeah. I think I've done a Turk's head knot or two when I worked on the bead side. Because people would come in and they'd want to do little ones for, um, like, a chain necklace mm -hmm. so that they could diffuse um, their essential oils. They like oh, to use. Necklace? Yeah, so in the Turk's head knot. So, you like, you would use the Turk head knot um, with the round lace that we have on retail. Yeah. And you would make it and then it would hold your, your oils and then hmm. just diffuse throughout the day. Interesting. So. Never heard of that. Yeah. Yeah, but I think we did a five by six. In the hat band, we did a three by four or something like that, the smaller one. Sure. Sounds yeah. great. That's probably what we did. Probably. <laughs> I probably could have got half this handle going off video, but you know. Well, people like to see it start. Yeah. <laughs> and I recommend pulling your strands out all the way every time because if you don't, they get very tangled and then you'll have an even bigger mess. This next one that you do, you just want to talk about it a little bit as you... Yeah, so basically I'm taking the strand here and pop it out of the place. So, top, if I flip it over, you can see I want to grab these two right here. And I'm bringing them over these two. So, hang on. So I'm grabbing these two, and I'm bringing them over these two. Just gonna lay them down under these two, which is gonna bring them up, and then over the top two. 
just kind of lay them down. So you want to do the reverse of what is happening before. So the hardest part is grabbing the right strands on the back and make sure they're laying flat in, right. in the correct orientation. Not crossed. Yeah. And keeping it snug the entire time so they don't slide. And this is why braiding leather is much nicer than braiding paracord. You don't get blisters. I was going to say, your hands are probably just going to be feeling real good. Oh, yeah. Nice and conditioned. <laughs> very, very soft. So, yep. Is that why you do leather work? To have soft hands for the ladies? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I love it. Uh... Um, let's hear Michael ask is whip making the only time that you would use a softening compound on the lace or would you also use it when you're doing the Turk's head or the round braids? Or? All of it. Yeah. All of it. I would use it for double loop, Mexican round braid, Turk's heads, anything. Well, just like Denny, anytime he finishes, you know, like he'll, it, when he's making a saddle, he'll put his saddle strings on it and pull them out and do a couple bleeder knots, but then he's going to put saddle soap on them and wax them together or anytime he does anything. So yep. it's always good to condition any leather that you're using. Yeah. Even when I'm going to do those button knots, I'm going to condition them beforehand. Mm -hmm. It just makes them snug up nice, lay better. Just like kind of using like a wax hand sewing cord. Mm -hmm. Like it, it pulls everything together. It gives you a little bit of friction. So it, it makes everything hold. It makes it nicer. Yeah. It just makes everything better. Why not? <laughs> so, we're about halfway done. With the handle, anyway. Have you... You have marked. I have marked where I'm dropping. You, yeah, so Spencer has gone through and tied string to all of the sections where he's dropping so that he doesn't have to remember to measure as he goes. Yep. So he did his little math chart with his little tree, and then he took his whip and he tied just string down the sections where he's going to need to drop yep. or start uh, skiving. Or uh, I mean, I'll do that before. I'll just, it's feeling. Like okay. need to start doing that. Uh, whenever they start bunching up or changing the angle that they're going at, because this is a nice 45. You want to keep it at a 45. You want to keep it at a 45. So if they start changing angles or getting tight or bunching up, you need to size down or drop your strand. So Same thing with paracord, except paracord really doesn't bunch up. It mainly changes angles. Yeah, Michael, even the kangaroo lace that you would buy from us, it hasn't been waxed or conditioned. It's just been the, the hides have been tanned and it's been cut and put on the spool. Yep. So... Yeah, as you work it or when you're done, you know, Denny, literally Denny will saddle soap every project when he's finished with it. Oh, yeah. Um, he'll get in that lace and then he'll buff it out with a shearling cloth um, just to protect, add moisture, and uh, once again, just make everything feel really nice. Yeah, and you want to condition your whips as you use them, too. Like, every time you use them, condition it afterwards. Oh. Makes them last a lot longer. Every time somebody brings a whip in here for me to repair, they're always dry rotted. Always. Oh. Every time. Yeah. I'm like, I can't really do nothing with that, but I'll try. <laughs> yeah, I think that's one thing that a lot of people, like especially leather crafters that are making finished product for customers, we should encourage our customers to be treating and protecting their leather good just so that it lasts. It's a natural product. It, it's breaking down and degrading with use and mm. so adding conditioner adding that moisture back in especially you know if you're actually using this whip on like a daily basis in life if you're some cowboy slash what are they stockman stockman's down in australia whatever you call yourself like if it's out in the elements or if it's just like sitting around, that's super yeah. dry too. It's actually probably more conditioning for it to be used yeah. Yeah. on a regular basis um, than just sitting around. That's probably worse for leather than anything. Yeah. Yeah. Because at least the oils from your skin, from the horse, from whatever is kind of getting in there. But if it's yeah. just sitting in a closet or sitting on a case. 
Heck, Dondi uh, conditions his hats every every day. He puts hat cleaner on them every day. I could see that. Yep. It looks like you're going to have to check out uh, Thea's page because yep. she makes some pretty great whips. Oh, does she? Mm -hmm. Peter's from Poland, right? Yep. Okay. Yes. You remember? Yeah, well, I had that. It was all P's because his first and his last name and Poland all started with a P, so it just kind of went together. <laughs> What's your favorite letter of the alphabet? Yeah. Who, me? No, just, I was just. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Peter. Okay. Desert Meeks. Do you stretch your lace before it goes on the spool? Um, we don't make it here. We buy it from Australia. Um, we carry birdsaw lace. Ah, uh, it's it's. Do you think that it's stretched? It's not. It's not very stretched. I mean, they probably I, hold tension on it while they spool it, yes, which it, might pull it out a little bit. But yeah, it's not. I stretched this this brown dark brown lace. I pulled off the spool. Oh, um, you just got a quarter inch lace. Yep. Okay. And it, I, I still stretched it, and it, it did stretch. Okay. A little bit. Spencer stretched after he cut the the hide that he was using on Wednesday when we did that video. He showed you how he stretches his lace. Yep. What's the best and worst leather to use for whips? Um, best leather, kangaroo. Always. Uh, worst leather, I haven't used all of them. They're probably goat. Oh, really? Yeah. Because super thin. Super stretchy. Super stretchy. Probably breaks very easily. Have you tried using the kid skins? I have not. But those aren't used... are those aren't really stretchy, but they are heavily finished. Yeah. And so I don't know if that would affect like the conditioning or something. Or just the like how it would stretch. Are you talking about the really finished kid, kid skins, like the really stiff stuff? Mm-hmm. Mm, yeah, I don't know. Right. I'd feel like if I when I did stretch it, it'd break all that off. Yeah, it'd break the, the top grain or like that acrylic finish that it's yeah. got on it. Thea says that she tried deer skin once and it was horrible. I've made a couple deer skin whips. Yeah. A couple. They turned out okay. It takes a lot of getting used to. Because it's really cheap. So I did it. <laughs> we had some really cheap. I don't. Deer skin in general isn't all that cheap. I mean, it's definitely way cheaper than kangaroo. Well, I used our like economy, that black economy mm -hmm. stuff we had for a little bit. Yeah. All you guys that are encouraging your customers to take care of their leather products. Yes. Yes. I know everybody comes in here and they've got like this jacket that's just been, or you know, something that's been sitting in their garage, their garage or the yeah the barn just for forever, and they're like, "Can you make this look new again?" And just like the surface is cracked to to pieces, and it's just. Drier than a the cracker. Then the then outside. Uh, where's the where's that desert where the or like up north where the badlands yeah, but where like the earth is just cracked because yeah. it's so dry. All right. Okay. I'm gonna transition into a herring mode now. Okay. So, is there a certain spot that you needed to be at before you did so that? The transition is right here. So the steel rod ends like right here. Okay. So when I tie my transition knot, it's gonna be right here. And cover up where I transition into a herringbone. 
And that's your handle. And that's my handle. Okay. That's my handle. Is there a certain length that, that, that like, is a good standard or, like, an average standard for a handle? Or is it um, just usually where that rod is? Uh, it's however long you want to make your handle. I was going to say, because that handle is this quite is, long. This is a nine-inch handle. Mm-hmm. Uh, David Morgan made his six inches. So he used a railroad spike. Oh, okay. Or a big spike. Like a nail. A giant nail is what he used. So, um, it varies. I've made them with 12-inch handles. I was going to say, that one over there is quite long, but it's a well, different style. Well, it's a stock whip. So, stock why, whip. why does that have such a long handle? Uh, it's just how they're made. It doesn't... The thong and the handle are two separate pieces. They're mm-hmm. put together with a keeper. So, it's just a different style whip. That's why they're made gotcha. like that. I also have made a bullock, which I think you've seen me crack in the parking lot. I broke it. <laughs> um, oh, no. Yeah, it snapped in half. I think I saw that. Yeah, it, <laughs> it was. A, it's a fifteen foot. It's basically this, except the ha- the thong was fifteen feet long, and the handle is six feet long. Did you cry a little bit inside? Not really. No, <laughs> it's just a piece of bamboo. Oh, that broke. Yeah. Oh, okay. The so that was... handle broke. Okay, not the not the whip. Is it easy to repair when that happens? Yeah, yeah. I mean, all it is is a keeper. So it's a keeper. All you have to do is tie a loop onto the end of a stick. So loop on the end of a stick. You put the thong back on. Good to go. Yeah. All right. Do you prefer using bamboo or metal? Um, What's different? Yeah, what's the difference? No, no, no. no. It's too different. Because the bamboo wasn't your core, was it? The bamboo wasn't my core for this. I used a steel rod for the handle stiffener in this. And I use bamboo for stock whips. This one's actually an oak handle. Yeah. Yeah, so so two different applications. You're good. Yep. All right, now I'm just going to transition straight into a herringbone. So under three, over three. So with one singular one? With one singular strand. Okay, so we're we're now taking one strand. Yeah, the other one. This guy. <laughs> That's the one I want. Under three, over three. Yeah, Thea makes a really good point. Sometimes people want to practice and and for myself like I'll use if I'm testing a concept I'm going to use cheap whatever I've got you know to make sure that all of my things come together but when you're doing something like this like the material that you use really makes a huge difference mm-hmm. and it can make a big difference on whether you continue to go no, forward with a project because if you're struggling so much because you're using materials that aren't meant yep. to do the project that you're trying to do um, you're just going to get frustrated it's not going to come out well and so using the materials that are meant for the project uh, that you're trying to do, even though they might be a little bit expensive, is is worth it. Yeah. Because honestly, yeah, if you spend several days trying to get this figured out and you've just used, you know, some leather that's not meant to be and you take it outside and it breaks on you. Or when you're, the first leather whip I did was made out of veg, mm-hmm. just veg cow. I broke like eight strands in that thing. It was only you can't pull on it like you can't, can't pull this. on it. It was only a three foot whip, but I broke like eight strands. Yeah. On the overlay alone, and I still have it, but yeah, you can't use it. <laughs> it ain't the prettiest thing in the world to say yeah. the least. Yeah. And that just can cause more frustration than necessary. Yep. Spencer, has anyone ever told you how to calm aura? Yes. <laughs> It's the grandpa in him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's his many lives lived. The many, many lives lived. <laughs> many, many. You want to scoot many. your project yeah, up yeah. there? I can scooch it. I think this is one of the calmest shows we've had in a minute. What? I said I think this is one of the calmest shows we've had in a minute. There we go. There we go. Got it. (laughs) 
Mm, okay. No. There we go. <laughs> Back to normal. Yeah, Peter said that he made he made one bull whip, a seven foot one from cowhide, and then he had the chance to use um, kangaroo, and it was a completely different experience. Yep. Even just cutting in the lace is way easier. Mm-hmm. Bye, Ron. I don't know what you guys are doing over on Twitch. You're talking about weird things. Like video equipment. I don't... I have no comments on that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So you take the top most... Oh, so these now you're pulling all the way to the side. Yeah, I'm pulling these out. Because you're doing the hair mode, so you no longer have strands underneath. Nope. And you take the uppermost one. Yep. Under three, over three. Under three. So like this one's, it's hard to see because it's really far down, but this one's on the top. It's pointing up towards this direction. This one's actually highest, as you can see. So mm -hmm. you're going to take this one, go around the back, under three, over three. And there's these two right here. These You can see these two are separate than these four, and you want to pull another one away. So you want to split it just like that. And that helps, especially if you're doing really high plats. Um, you don't have to count out each time. Yep, the struggles of working with long lace. So, you, what was the longest leather one that you've made? Um, eight foot. An eight foot. It was the longest one I've made. I've had people ask for like nine or ten footers, but I'll, they didn't like the price. <laughs> yeah, kangaroo has the. I mean, if anybody's ever looked at a kangaroo before. They're basically just like furry people with weird feet. And a tail. And a tail. I don't understand why they're so buff. Because they work out. <laughs> Where's the or they just, you know, fight with you, like literally have boxing matches. Mm -hmm. They are fascinating creatures. They are. Um, yeah, pretty, pretty interesting creatures, but they have... They're very strong, muscular animals, just like horses. So I feel like horse could be another option yeah. to make lace out of. It's just that... It's not quite as strong. Yeah, it's not quite as, as dense and strong, but it... And then, you know, you're you're mostly seeing the use for that um, in the shell industry to make those, you know, your shell cordovan and uh, that kind of leather. And so... Plus, I don't know... Like the way that you cut the lace from the hide, it actually helps for like the hides are, are small yeah. and they're compact. And, and if you're trying to go around a horse hide. That'd be a big hide. Yeah, that would be a really big hide. And then you're going to have a lot more, you have obviously a lot more belly. You're going to have more arm and flank areas yeah. in it. Um, and typically only the horse butts are vegetable tanned. I've never seen any veg tanned horse fronts. Now that doesn't mean that they're not out there. I just haven't seen them. They're probably going to be a lot more rare. Um, but the kangaroo hide is a vegetable tan leather. Um, and so I think usually, you know, the, the horse has been kind of contracted for more of like that shoe with the shell cord of end, that high end kind of thing. And plus there's just, we just, in the world, we just don't eat a lot of horse. Some countries eat, obviously we don't eat any here in the United States, but, nope. um, the Spanish eat a lot of horse. The Canadians will eat some horse. So that's where you're getting the leather, and there's just not a big enough market. Not Unfortunately, much. the poor roos are considered pests, so yep. <laughs> we farm them. And livestock in Texas. Oh, yeah. They're livestock in Texas. 
So is that a lot of root root farms in Texas. Apparently, I don't know. I haven't done extensive wonder, research. Wonder where those hides go. I don't know. Hopefully here. I mean, the ones that we get are tanned in Australia. I haven't yeah. heard of anybody tanning rue hides. Now I'm curious. Now I feel like I need to do research on all these Texas rue farms. Yeah. Can you buy the meat? Uh, I don't know. I don't know why they farm them. Has anybody ever eaten kangaroo meat? I don't know. I've had beaver. Mm. <laughs> How was that? <laughs> oh, it's really good. It's really, really good. What is it? Does it taste like chicken? No. It tastes like really... <laughs> Tender beef, almost moose. It, okay, I've no, never eaten that either. No, probably not. Moose is my favorite. Do you moose go moose hunting favorite. every once in a while? No, I know a guy who goes moose hunting mm. every once in a while, and he brings us back a lot of meat. I feel like you know a lot of guys. I do know a lot of guys. <laughs> yep. Well, I feel like when your father's in taxidermy, you kind of get into those weird groups of people that like to hunt weird things. That's not weird. I mean... Are there, there's not moose in Missouri, are there? No, you have to go to Canada or... Okay. Uh, uh, I don't know, Minnesota, I think. I don't know. Alaska. Alaska. Minnesota. Minnesota. I know tags are expensive. You said that you can flat with chrome tan kangaroo, but it's a lot like using deer skin, so brush up on your curse words. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Prepare your mind. Yep. I, I want to try tanning out my own deer skin in a veg, veg tanning my own deer skin and trying it that way. I don't know how well that'll work, but hmm. it's something I want to try. Because I don't think anybody veg tans deer skin. I mean, people like to brain tan it, but no, I. I don't think I've heard of a veg tan one. That'd be cool. Mm -hmm. Then I can say I shot the deer, I tanned it, and I made a whip out of it. Does anybody want a lace conditioning tip? Sure. We'll take it. What do you got for us? I mean, I feel like it's a waste not to use the skins once it's gone. I, I really want when, so I have a lot of dogs, um, I have five of them, and I have this beautiful Australian, not Australian, I have an Australian Shepherd, she's right here on the floor. She is really pretty, but that's not the one I'm talking about. I've got a, um, a Husky Malamute mix, and he has a gorgeous gray and white hide, and I keep telling Chris that when he dies, I would like to make like a Game of Thrones cape with him draped over my shoulders or mount him so that he can be in my house, which, you know, I could see you probably for either, actually. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, I know. Like, I could stuff him and have him, like, barking out the window <laughs> or, like, howling. Like, I could just sit him on the couch and he could be howling like he likes to do. I've got a good picture of that face. Oh, could wow. you do that? <laughs> uh, probably. Like, curled up all cute but howling? Yeah. Okay. All right. So. How's it going? I think we need to start sizing down a few strands. You feel like it's getting a little tight? I feel like it's, it's getting changing a little less the than angle. 45. You can see the angle is steeper here than here. Just a little bit. But you don't want to let it get too far away. But you don't want to get too far, no. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my sketchy, sketchy sizing jig. His very apparently. sketchy sizing jig. Apparently. I don't think it's that sketchy. Um, Let's do this so we do can You want to see. scoot it up? Yes. Okay. That's probably good. Okay. All right. There we go. So what I'm going to do is I got it. This is a angled sizer. So what I'm going to do is stick it in here like so. Should already be pretty much set up. But and I got this little collar. 
I'm going to slide over and then whenever I pull it, it's going to take a little bit off like so. Oh, the one under my little edge guide. Hang on. Ooh, this makes me nervous. Oh, is it now? <laughs> Are you my... cutting it on the back side? Yes, I'm cutting it on the back side. Okay. I have this problem occasionally where this thing slides up. So that's why I have this here. But, you know, sometimes I have to tighten it. <laughs> One of the perks of having homemade tools. We'll just tighten this down right quick. All right, that should be good. <laughs> Andrea, are you afraid I'm gonna eat you? Uh, is that why you don't want to take me along during the apocalypse? Oop. What is happening? There we go. Okay. That's good. So, now I'm getting out of frame again. That's okay. You do, you do what you need to do, Spencer. We could look at you from the front. So I watched this video the other day on TikTok of this guy processing bamboo into strips about that size. Yeah. How was that? It was fascinating. He took like full stocks, like the big ones, and just was like breaking them down with his crazy hatchety thing. And then he had some prong things that he would take and stick in it and then it would separate. And he just like kept separating down these sections of bamboo until he got to fine. I think he was maybe making brooms. Mm, yeah. And so like he kept, I don't know. It was very interesting. So you're going to do that with all the strands? Nope. I'm oh. only going to do with like probably half the strands. Oh, okay. So I'll take one from each side. Oh, you want, there you go. Yeah, yeah, there we go. So, go back through. So. I mean, what if it dies, Andrea? Like, you might as well eat it if it's dead. Or tan its hide so you can protect yourself. <laughs> <laughs> now, Spencer's the one you want with you during an apocalypse. He seems super handy. <laughs> yeah. You and my friend Christy, we could, I feel like we could survive for a while. Yeah, you told me about her. Yeah. So. <laughs> You're the two people that I know in my life that I feel like the, could help can, me survive. <laughs> yeah, in an apocalypse. <laughs> and I'll just bring the herd of dogs. <laughs> oh, go back to the top one, Tony. Yeah. So... I'll probably only size down three or four at the moment. I'm only taking like a half a millimeter off, not much. No, that was fine. They got down to the end. Uh, huh. Tori said that. Apparently, they eat some horse in Belgium, and horse meat is stringy. I've never had horse, so I can't testify. Maybe if you need, maybe you need to sous vide it a little bit longer. You can just pre cook it that way. Maybe that's how you need to cook horse meat. You just pre cook it first. Yeah, just sous vide it, break it down real good, and then go to get sear. I'm sure you can make it taste okay. Yeehaw! Well, that one's. Beveling out nicely. Mm -hmm. Is there a specific side of the strand that you take off, or does it matter? Uh, it would be the same side every time, just because I can't flip it over. But but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. What side? Okay. As long as you take it down, because both these sides are beveled already for okay. me sizing them. I size it down both sides, so both sides are beveled. Right. All right, let's 
be one more here. Thea wants to know if you've ever tried Bevan's Beveler Sizer. I have not. Do you know what that is? Nope. Well, I have to look that up. Bevan, B-E-V-A-N. Do you know that name? Mm-hmm. Okay. Is there a link that you could plop in somewhere? Yep. Is Red Dead, is Red Dead Redemption Two a video game? Yeah. Is that, okay. I'm sorry, you lost your horse, Nick. It's a western. <laughs> All right. Okay. So how many did you do? Four. I did four. Two on each side. Two on each side. Okay. Just so it doesn't drop off super quick. Guys, there's a plethora of circumstances that could happen that would dictate what we could or might possibly do. Yes. <laughs> That's a really nice back of your head. Thank you. You're welcome. Do you want to move the table? Or no, that should be fine. Okay, just as long as I'll you... just I'll just stand back here and do it. Cool. Yeah, just be really uncomfortable. Stretched out fashion. <laughs> just give like get a good arm stretch in. Yep. Oh my elbow hurts. So uh, Thea was saying about um, her lace conditioning tip. So Thea, if I'm understanding this correctly, you condition all of your laces before you even start braiding, which we did too a little bit. You took and you pulled yeah, all of them yeah. through. So what she likes to do is um, cut all the lace and attach it to your belly, then grease it up, let it sit for several hours or overnight, then buff with a clean cloth, a little bit of friction. And then she says uh, she uses fee beans if she's not worried about it darkening too much. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, if she doesn't want it to darken, she'll use a fee beans conditioner. Like just, which, fee beans makes a lot of products. Do you have a specific one that you like? Um, or if she doesn't mind if it darkens up, she'll use Obernoff's, Obernoff's, Obernoff's. No, I don't know. I don't know what that is. Yeah. There are so many leather conditioning products out there. Yep. I mean, I condition it before I stretch it, and then as I'm sizing it, I condition it again. So, and then most of the time I'll let it sit for a while, but it depends what I'm doing. So Spencer prefers to taper his strands when he needs to instead of doing it beforehand. Yeah. That's just the way I've always done it. Aussie leather conditioner. Okay, yeah. That's a good one. Yes, Michael, I watched Nobody. I watched it when it came out. It was great. Have you watched that? Mm -mm. With the dude from Breaking Bad? Mm -mm. I no. I think so. It's a pretty good movie. Is it in theaters? Mm, no, it came out last year. <laughs> oh, last year. I don't know. I think it's on, H I think it's on HBO. Do you oh, have no. that? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. I bet you could find it on uh, YouTube TV, too. Yeah. Well, I'm not a big movie whiz, so. Oh, and after each belly, I do roll it. Make sure you roll it. So. All oh, right. With a board and a hard surface, just. Roll it. Evens out the tension. 
and he's, he did. You do have a board in here to. I do have a board. Yeah, so hopefully we'll get there. I doubt it, but we have a lot to go. We've only done like a foot and a half. <laughs> it gets faster, right? Uh, kinda. <laughs> Smaller, and then you drop strands soon, and like yep. another foot. Yep. I feel like we're going to have to come back to this so you can show people how to tie your little knots around all your little spots. We could, yes. Okay. If you want to schedule another video. I could hold off. <laughs> oh, Michael. I'm not going to buy a DVD of anything anymore. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Well, most of us, Thea, have uh, granite slabs that we use for our tooling. So I suppose you could just use, you can use that to roll too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. I would lay it on top of the granite slab and then get a two by four. Roll it on top. And roll with the two by four. It's like put all your weight into it. Like oh, yeah. Put it on the floor and lay. Yeah. <laughs> and lay on it. And Not lay on it, but like push down as hard as you can. As you roll it, especially up by the handle, and then ease off the pressure as you get down towards the end because you'll crush it. Michael sent me pictures of his granite headstone that he won't be using in the end. Yeah. But he's got it and he says it's marvelous he says it's on the floor and it's not going anywhere <laughs> well that's good well Andrea your experience sounds unpleasant and I'm sorry you had to go through that <laughs> Yeah, are those couple of things that you mentioned, if your links aren't working, can we just Google them and probably come up? Because we, we can do that later. William is going to have grilled cheese on sourdough, and that sounds fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's getting there. It is, slowly. Only got, like, a yeah. lot more to go, like yeah. five feet. Well, we'll make sure we get through a drop. Yep. Because that's the we'll important part. Yep. And you just keep doing that until you run out. Until you run out. So I'm going to size down a couple more here. Mm. Oh, yeah. This would be really cool on an axe handle. The braid? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've done a... On my hammer I use here, I did a extra long uh, Turk's head knot. It's really long. It's like, mm -hmm. a, it's just a really long one. It went black again. I think that's just us. There it is. is it, there it is. Yeah, because I'm over here working. <laughs> so, it turned out really nice. It's in that braiding book we have. So, one more. There it goes. There it goes. That's okay. You can just leave that box right there. That's fine. I'm gonna move it down a little bit. <laughs> you just like center it in the screen. That would be cool too. That'd be fine. Oh, God, you're making me hungry. Stop it. Mm -hmm. There's a place that's not far from here that has a really amazing grilled cheese and tomato soup that they put. I think that's like an orange zest in it that's like unique and delicious. It's a little warm outside though right now for... Is it an outside place? 
Well, there is a little bit of seeding. It's on Pickwick, just that little cute Pickwick corner. Um, it's called Cherry Pickers. Oh, uh, well, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, so it's an adorable little restaurant. It just has like a couple places for seating inside. It's a teeny tiny building. It and used then, to be a food truck that was a grilled cheese place. Oh, yeah. Oh. Was it amazing? Is it still a thing? Yeah, it's still a thing. It's just... It's in a different city. Oh, well, that's silly. State. Well, they moved, so they took their truck with them. Oh, that's silly. And opened up shop there. You could get it with barbecue, like with pulled pork on it. Ooh. That's not a grilled cheese. It, it had a grilled cheese, and then it had, <laughs> then it had pulled pork on it. That's called a melt. Yeah. <laughs> I watched this whole thing about what a grilled cheese is and what it isn't. Nobody asked me. <laughs> and there's, there's grilled cheeses and then there's melts. <laughs> so you have, if you have meat on it, it's a melt. If it, and it's just cheese for is a grilled really? cheese. Sorry, I muted the microphone because I what didn't room? believe you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you, Liz. Thanks. That's what all the chefs say. Eric, it's a little new. It's not super new. It's a couple months old. Do we just need to zoom in on it again? I feel like we get this question every day. <laughs> People just want to check you out, Liz. That's all. Thea, it has been a pleasure talking with you. It's not super often that we have a whip maker join us for our, mm -hmm. our whip making videos. Nope. So thanks for hanging out and uh, sharing some of your info with us. We appreciate it. We should so. No. Nope. Mm -mm. Okay, well, you'll just annoy everybody, then. <laughs> Apparently I'm starting with him today. <laughs> no, this is before you came in. No, no, no. 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 There, there, there you go. I don't know. That's the, that's the funnest part. You say you were thinking about making it wrap all the way around? Yeah, I thought it would be cool to take just the wood grain from the side and, and then meet up. Uh, here in the middle, and then go around to where it meets up with a bear on the other side. So we'll see. Maybe, maybe someday. This is where you get bored with our videos. We start showing off tattoos. Yeah, I found a guy that's he does like geometrics. So it's here in Springfield. It was um, Michael. No, Michael's <laughs> something with End Times Tattoo. I think you can look him up on Instagram, End Times Tattoo, and his, I think his name is Michael. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty sure. Yeah, he does really awesome, like, which is why I chose him to do this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he was a lot of fun. It was a good time. Will that be tanned later, Liz? Of course, Dean. I actually made that joke yesterday. I mean, I don't know like how long you can work in a leather shop before it's just like when you die, some part of you needs to be tanned into leather. Yeah. You know, like it just, it like just seems like that's just the natural yeah. course of things. No. <laughs> no. I don't think so. Seems the most appropriate. I feel like I've been here my whole life sometimes. I mean, you've... My whole adult... I've been here my whole adult life. A couple more years and you'll be here more than half your life. Yeah. From... Yeah. Yeah, that's... It is getting close to that. Thanks, Tony. That's depressing. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate that. It could be worse. No, I mean, I got eight... Yeah, just eight, nine more years to go. And then it'll be half my life. Be here more uh, years, more I years did. here than you have not been here. That is that is true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, who is zero? Do we know who that is? I don't know. So it is. Number, it actually. is from a leather design. Zero. What platform are you reading on? Um, he's on Twitter. No, he's not. He's on Facebook. Mm -hmm. I mean, on no. YouTube. Mm -hmm. What remind you of Darcy? What? Uh, there is a guy. His name is Eric. That Denny drew a design for him. Yeah, he was. Tattoo. He was the one that wanted to see it. Oh, oh, I don't think that he's gotten it done. No, no, no. But he was the one that was like he wanted. It. Eric was the one that was talking about my arm. 
Oh. Yes. I'm with you now. Cool. It helps whenever I get mm-hmm. on the chats and actually read them. I'm mm-hmm. glad I'm glad you're with me now. Yeah. I have a picture of it somewhere. There yes, I see you over there, Zero, but I don't think we know who you are. I know who you are, but I don't know who you are. I've been watching these. I know that, yes, we know. So this is... Copy. That's what I had. So it is It is a leather design. I had a really close friend that passed away. And that was some of his work. So that's, that's what I did. Hi, Lunes. Are you excited about the braiding? It's going to be full of your hair. Yep. How's it going, Spencer? Slow. Any Anything exciting happening? Not really. Just, you know, braiding along. Almost down to the drop point. But I'll probably drop a strand before then and then drop the other strand. So I'll probably drop one here and then the next one there. Gotcha. I think it's just a bear. I don't think it's any... I don't know if it's a specific kind of bear. Grizzly. It's probably... Yeah. There's like mountains and trees <laughs> and some snow. Not that they don't have those in China, but um, I think <laughs> it's more U.S. based. <laughs> Zero, what's your name? If you want to share it with us. If you don't. If you don't, you don't have to, but... Just say it out loud and we'll listen close. Yeah. Oh, Michael, that's awful. No. No, don't do that. (laughs) I don't even want to say that out loud. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. My other thingies went away, Tony. What other thingies? I can only see Facebook now. My Twitch and YouTube went away. Thanks. Oh, I knew that, Tim. I'm sorry. Yeah, we know. We know. I. Just, yeah. We got, Listen. We got you. We got you. There's a lot of people, and I'm not good with names. I mean, we've got to know who Dean is. We've got to know that Dean loves zippers. <laughs> I think Victor lives here. He does. Then I got to remember. Then there's. Uh, who Lil Fear is, then Chevy Guy. So many of you. Then Zero. <laughs> what's the other... Uh, what's the guy that's from Australia? That always tells the jokes. He hasn't been here in a few times. Probably because he's asleep. You let us know when you're going to drop one. Yes, I'm almost there. Okay, we're almost to drop in one. I'm going to do one more round. So, 12 more. Mm. Zero is a road name. What's the... More. What's the account? Dean is going to get all your info. I... I mean, when you say it, Tony, I'll know it. But I got... It's not... Razor blades, yes. yes there it is. See, Zero got it. See? <laughs> he's, got a, he's got a list probably somewhere. So they're both Tim? <laughs> yes, they are both Tim's, Okay. the same Tim. So the two Tim's. Maybe that's why Zero remembers razor blades. See? See all the things we got to try to remember? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we really do pretty good. <laughs> we do better than we <laughs> fail <laughs> doing good. Most is this one like just it. looking a little bit loose because you haven't pulled it through yet? Yeah. Okay. It's right here. There it is. Shut up, Paul. It's actually the next one. So. <laughs> oh. I see the problem. All the 
Tim's. All right. I'm ready to draw, I believe. Hey guys, we're doing some braiding. <laughs> So we're dropping a strand. So this is your first marker. Mm -hmm. So. So you're going to drop one preemptively before you get there. Yes. Because you don't want to make too big of a. A jump a, or a, a drop off. Mm -hmm. Scoot up here. All right. So I got my strands here. If you notice. So if I took another strand, I'd go in between these two right here. But this one is the shortest one right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that short one, tuck it just kind of like that, just so it's out of the way. Just leave it just like that. And then when I go around, I'm going to go under three over two and just not grab that strand. And then you're just going to kind of braid it in a little bit to tuck it in. Yep. And then you'll cut it. And then I'll cut it after I pull it tight. So I'll do a couple more here. Now, do you always leave more on the back side or on the front side than on the back? Because you're going under two, over three. Was that right? Or yeah. I mean, it's just so you don't get a double strand. Okay. So if I went, um, instead of going under three, over two, if I went under two, over three, I would my strand would be laying next to this strand. And then there wouldn't be one separating it. Gotcha. So it would have two strands. And then you'd have a separation. So it'd be like, I can't use that really. Okay, it'd be like if this strand didn't have, it wasn't zigzagged right. Right. If there was two strands laying next to each other. So this strand came all the way over to here and went up like that. Right. Without that. You don't want that. And it would look weird. So if that happens and you have to go whoops and you have to undo and try again. Yep. Yeah. Yes, Victor, all of the quotes should be out. So if you check your inbox and for whatever reason you're missing something, then just shoot us an email live at Springfield Leather and we'll check it out. <laughs> they went out like right at five o'clock last night. Oh, <laughs> Tim on Twitch is the one that scorched his shirt last week before he was going on his date. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> he was laughing about something. <laughs> I think, what, what were, were we talking about the caskets? Was that the whole casket conversation? Oh, yeah. That was a couple weeks <laughs> We distracted ago. him so much that he burnt his shirt. Mm. <laughs> Sounds funny. He was going to go on a date. That sucks. They were going to a concert, I think. Mm-hmm. I don't remember who they were seeing. Yeah, just take your shirt off. Oh. <laughs> Bye, Eric. It's good to see you. Just wear it with the hole in it. <laughs> At least she knows you're ironing. <laughs> Isn't it the effort that counts? Yeah. All right. So my next short one's my first strand right here. So I'm going to do two more. And then whenever we drop that one, we'll pull tight the next one and cut it off. This one. So do you have kind of like a standard amount of times you'll go over a strand before you cut it? Uh, you at least want the, so I believe this is the strand we dropped right here. It's loose. So you want this strand and a couple of these to be snugged over that. So whenever you pull it tight, it goes tight. Yeah, that's the right one. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I've I done it a lot. So. You get used to looking for those things. Yeah. You get the eye for it. I'm whipping Luna with your strands over here. Uh oh. All right. So we're going to pull this one tight or just snug so it seats in there. So it's a little wonky wonky but when we roll when you it, roll it when we roll it it'll flatten it out the rolling fixes all flaws and then when i'm cutting this i'm going to cut it at an angle so it tapers down don't cut any other strands i'll be bad <laughs> and then we're going to take the next short strand 
which is this guy, and it's in that same spot, two strands up. Uh, I need to go in between the two when I pull my next strand around. So we'll just tuck that down here, and then we go around the back, go under three, over two. Just like that. No, both sides are under three, over two. Yep. Yeah. They're complaining because I brought up all the things that apparently we said we weren't going to bring up today. What's that? Um, glue, zippers, and caskets. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but we didn't talk about your neighbors. We didn't talk about my... <gasps> Actually, I have an interesting... It's not regarding my, like, right next door neighbors, but my across the street neighbors last night. Um, the last few nights on the way home in the middle of the road, kind of like in front of my house and then slightly to the right, the, um, the manhole that's in the middle of the road has been oozing a little bit the last few days and a semi unpleasant smell has been coming out of it. And so we got home like Tuesday. I noticed it Wednesday night. I wasn't home. And then last night we were driving home and I mentioned it to Chris as we were coming down the street. And I was like, I don't think that that's okay. Cause it's really hot and I don't feel like any moisture should be coming out of mm -hmm. our manhole in the middle of the road. And so Got home, ate dinner, did all the stuff, and then I took my dog for a walk. I'm not sure I could have eaten here. And, well, I mean, it didn't smell it. Like, in the house, I didn't smell it. It was just, like, when you're standing in the middle of the road, you could smell it. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, and so I was coming back home, and our neighbor um, across the street, he had been having a little birthday party for, I think, his daughter-in-law or something, and so they were all kind of standing in the road. Everybody was getting ready to leave. And um, he caught me. He's a super sweet guy. Um, he caught me and was like, hey, have you noticed this, too? This kind of situation in the road and I was like yeah, I noticed it a couple nights ago and I was like I was gonna give it a minute to see if it went away but since it hasn't um yeah manhole oozing not great and so I called the city last night and they came out like it was like eight nine o'clock at night and they came out and they there was a clog sure enough and they mm. got it pumping out and flowing again is nice. what the guy told me so I was impressed with how fast the city took care of it. Yeah. Like, that was really cool. Like, an hour after I called, they were out there, and it was 9 o'clock at night, so. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay. All right. Well, I'm just going to pull it. It's that strand right there. Pull gotcha. You give it a little tug. Gotcha. Look at that. Whoa. Gone. That would be a good snippet of video. Just like a little. <laughs> Somebody could clip that on Twitch. Yep. And then. Twitch clip. Just keep braiding, and that's it. And then I'll do that all the way down. Drop it here as I taper down to my designated sizes. Um, so. Dale, real fast, ask where you get your handle from. Like my handle material, like what I use for the steel rod. It's just a quarter inch steel rod I got from Sutherland's across the road. So Lowe's, Home Depot, anywhere. Yeah. But yeah, that's what we got so far. So there's a... 12 inch? Nine, nine, inch. nine inch? Nine inch steel rod in the middle. In, Way in, deep, deep down. Yep. Alrighty, so Spencer will continue to braid, and maybe what we'll do next week, we've got Denny for the box, but then the week after that, I think we had a single video scheduled with Denny, but we might push that back and come back and do the couple little the uh, heel knots. Knot. Heel knot and transition knot. Yeah, sure. on this. And, uh, Maybe we can even do a couple videos of some whip cracking just for yep. fun and play them on here. So, anyways, that's what this is where we've gotten. He will continue to brand this is just he just keeps doing that. He keeps dropping the strands at these intervals. Once again, I will have him write out both um, all three of your bellies. Yep. The the measurements and the his little cute Christmas tree trees that he does for his measurements. We'll get all that put together in some sort of downloadable form that you guys can look at if you are interested in doing your own so you can kind of see the math side of things a little bit. Um, and then we'll maybe list a couple other materials that we think are important. Yep. Um, so, yes. I see what happened to Victor's. He must have got added after we copied all of our sheets. Oh. Victor, we so, will get you taken care of. We'll have to send it to you. Okay. Anything else? Let's like a... 
Well, right. Yeah. Sorry, I'm trying to get. No, you're good. I think. <laughs> how many lines did you use for your whip? Like how many strands? I assume so. Uh, the first belly was four, the second belly was eight, and the overlay is twelve. So there's three. It it blows my mind that there's just like three layers of kangaroo braiding yep. in there, which is just really interesting. I, th- I did the math yesterday, and it's like almost 200 feet of lace. 200 feet of lace. That's a lot of lace. Mm-hmm. And he almost got it out of one hide. Almost. Which is cool, yeah. Almost. A little bit one foot larger, and you think you would have been pretty good to go. Yeah, yeah. So. I would have been, would have been Billy, set. the link will be here on Facebook. You can watch right after we end it uh, on Facebook or go to YouTube and watch it. All righty, guys. Ha- uh, oh. Sorry, that one. You were responding to a message I couldn't see yet. Oh. <laughs> All right, guys. Have a great weekend, and we will be back next week. Yep. Bye. See ya.